Welcome to How to Cook That. I'm Ann Rida. La, la, la. <laughs> Don't usually get that bit wrong. Welcome to How to Cook That. I'm Ann Rudin and you guys overwhelmed me in the poll asking for another debunking video. So let's test out some more viral how-to videos to see if they're telling the truth and you really can do it that way or if they're faking them. So let's start with a channel we haven't seen before on debunking, but you guys sent me this video so many times. I do really appreciate you submitting in videos for me to review. The best place to do that is probably on Twitter. If you send me the link, then I've got that there. So this is from Taste Made UK and they did a frosting hacks video. So we'll start with this first cake. What they did is they took some Lindor chocolates, well it looks like Lindor chocolate balls to me, cut them in half and put them on top of a frosted cake. Looks easy enough so far. Then they take a hairdryer and they melt the Lindor balls and spread it over the top of the cake as well and add some fruit on top. Perfect. Perfect drip cake. We've done things with hair dryers and cakes before and it, it just melts the frosting and you can even see that in their video. If we rewind back, let me show you these side by side. They've got before and after. They magically change from these mixed melted frosting crooked drips into perfectly straight chocolate that has no frosting in it. But as always, let's actually give it a go and see what it looks like if we do what they said. Grab some Lindor balls. These are surprisingly difficult to cut perfectly in half. Then place them around the top of the cake and bring on the hairdryer. Oops, clearly I need to push these down a bit into the cake to stop them getting blown off the top. Now before I added these chocolates, I actually had this cake in the fridge for a couple of hours to give the frosting the best chance of surviving the heat of the hairdryer. As always, I try and give it the best chance of working. Now to cover the top how they had it, I need to blow some of that chocolate into the middle too. That's looking covered, but we've still got these lumps of chocolate everywhere. Oh dear. <laughs> I'll just try and cover that area with a little bit more chocolate. And then I think I'd better stop there because it's not getting any better. It just doesn't look great. Even adding fruit on top is not going to rescue this cake. If you do want to make a quick drip cake, here is my version of what I would do. Take your already frosted cake and then grab some ice magic or magic shell, depending where you live, what it's called, and start in the middle, adding it in a circular motion. And when you get nearer to that edge, just add a little bit more where you want it to drip down. You don't need heaps, just enough to let it flow over the edge. Then you can add the fruit on top on one side. Doesn't that just look beautiful? And you're done. A really simple, easy drip cake. Or if you prefer, you can of course use Lindor balls and a hairdryer. I'll leave that choice up to you. I know which one I would prefer. Okay, moving on to the next video. This one is by Five Minute Crafts. It's called Stunning Hacks You Must Try. We will try. It says a chilled candle burns longer. Now this hack has been circulating on websites for years. It says put your candles in the fridge and they'll last longer, but I've never actually tested it. The thing that makes me a little bit dubious about it is you put something in the fridge, it gets cold obviously, but you take it out, it doesn't stay cold for that long. And candles that size typically burn for many, many hours. So I would have thought the chill factor is going to wear off pretty quickly and then is it actually going to make that much difference? I don't know. So let's set up a time lapse and see if it really does burn down that fast. These two have been in the fridge for six hours and these two have just been at room temperature which in Australia in summer is quite warm. So let's light these up and then put it onto time lapse. This time lapse goes over five hours and after which time I needed to blow out the candles so that I could go to bed because you can't leave candles on unsupervised. Now on the pink one you can see that more of the wax has melted but the level hasn't gone down. With the purple one it looks like this one was melting faster than the other one but if I turn it around you can see this side is also melting and if I turn this one around 
you can see that this side is not melting because it's just the position of the wick in the candle is not quite central. So the side that the flame was closer to was melting faster than the other. But the level of wax is the same after five hours on all four candles. So did it make any difference at all? Well, if we have a look at these candles in the morning, once they've been allowed to go cold, you can see the wax level is exactly the same on both of them. So despite one of them getting a bit of a head start on melting the wax, it didn't actually use the wax up. They're still just at the same level. And that was burning for five hours. I'm pretty sure that by five hours, they're both the same temperature. The advantage of being chilled in the beginning will have worn off by then. So. I'm saying this one's fake, but just to be certain, let's do another test with some really small party candles because obviously they're gonna burn quicker. We can compare them even more. This one has been in the freezer for three hours and this one has been at room temperature. Pause and put in the comments which one you think will last the longest. They are neck and neck so far. The frozen candle was supposed to last longer according to Five Minute Crafts, but it looks like it can't stand the heat. And it's all over. The room temperature candle outlasted the frozen one by a couple of seconds, which scientifically could be because that one was lit first, which probably makes those couple of seconds difference. So in reality, they're burning at the same rate, exact same time. Don't waste your time putting it in the freezer. Okay, what have we got next? The same video tells us that if you have creases in your brand new shoes, then you go to your kitchen and brush softened butter onto the side of your shoe. Then put them in the freezer for two hours, at which point the creases and the butter have disappeared and they look like brand new shoes. Okay, well, let's test this one out. It's not like they would have switched the shoes on us in the freezer, is it? I have a shoe here with a crease just there where it folds when you're walking. So I'm gonna dip this in some butter and brush it on. Such a shame to waste shoes. The things I do for you guys, gosh, debunking is very wasteful. Then pop that into the freezer and freeze it for two hours after which time I have a shoe with frozen butter on it. <sighs> At least it's frozen, so it does come off in chunks. The crease is exactly the same as it was before, but now I have butter in the little holes and the stitching, which is obviously gonna attract dirt and it's just gross and it's really hard to get out. The hack doesn't work and now I have butter on my shoes. Why YouTube continues to promote this rubbish how-to content that just has fake hacks on it, I'll never know. I personally think it's devaluing the platform by promoting this rubbish. I mean, fake how-to content is not new. There's videos from years and years ago that were on the platform, but the difference is they never used to get millions of views. They used to get a small number of views and that was that. But these people have managed to game the algorithm and be doing really well and YouTube seems to be doing nothing about it. Let's take a look at this video from seven years ago where a guy dresses in a lab coat and then he carefully explains how to reverse the polarity of electricity to your microwave while warning you not to do it at home. And then they put a beaker of water into the microwave and instead of boiling the water, well, you can see for yourself. The results are spectacular. The 100 milliliters of liquid have been turned into ice. So let's test that one out. Here it goes. I have my glass of water into the modified microwave, turn it on, and a few minutes later, It's not cold, that's not ice. What is it? That's slime. Now, in case you were in any doubt, you can't reverse the polarity of electricity to your microwave and make it make ice or slime. Both of those were faked. It's as if the microwave and many different things in the kitchen that you just open and close have become the magic hat that magicians used to use. You know, the big black top hat and they'd pull out a rabbit. In this case, we just put something into the microwave and pull out something else and trick the audience. Let's look at another Five Minutes Crafts video. She spills her water all over her notebook 
dries it with paper towel, and then she puts it in the freezer. Shut the door, open it, and there we have a brand new notebook. It's not even that good a magic trick, but I'm gonna try it anyway. So if I spill water all over my notebook, the first thing I do is try and rescue my computer and my phone, because I'm more worried about them than the notebook. And then if you dry it off, then put it in the freezer and see what happens. Now for comparison's sake, I'm gonna spill water on another notebook and do what I would normally do if I wet a notebook, and that is dry it first and then separate the pages so they don't stick together. Put it over something rounded to keep the pages separate and then blast it with a hairdryer. Now once it's completely dry, I put that under a heavy book to flatten it again. So this is the one that I dried with the hairdryer and put under the weight. And you can still see some water damage there. You can tell that the pages have been wet, especially that first page, but overall it's not too bad. It's usable as a notebook. All right, let's check the one in the freezer. It's still all bent on the cover. It doesn't magically straighten like theirs did. And the pages are actually frozen together in a solid chunk. <laughs> Trying to get these apart is damaging the pages. And as soon as it comes to room temperature, of course, you just have a wet book. It's not gonna dry in the freezer. So it's really obvious that they switched the notebook out for a brand new notebook when you close the freezer. It's just not that entertaining a magic trick to watch. I'd rather watch someone who was good at magic do a trick like this guy. I'm gonna make all three travel from one fish bowl to another. Here comes the first one, just a shake like this. It jumps from this fish bowl over to this fish bowl. That's one. First one across. Watch, number two, just a shake, number two goes across. If you wanna know how to do that magic trick, then you can go and watch Jay on his channel. He actually explains how to do that trick and hundreds of other magic tricks. It's far more entertaining than watching five minute crafts, open and close a freezer or open and close a microwave and pretend that something has happened when it hasn't. All right, we need to make something edible so Dave has something to taste. Let's have a look at this next one. Grab some Skittles, he does like Skittles. Put them into the waffle machine. Then add pop sticks and boom, huge Skittle lollipops. Now I didn't own a waffle maker so I had to go buy one for this video and let's see what happens. Add an entire packet of Skittles I know that they didn't do this, but I'm gonna spray one section with cooking oil to see if it helps at the end. Add more Skittles and then add the pop sticks on top. Close the lid, push it down a bit, and then they set theirs to maximum, so I'm gonna do the same thing. Now it's only been on for one minute and we're already getting smoke, so let's turn it off and take a sneak peek. Woo, melted Skittles. <laughs> I'll leave that to cool. It does say these are quick desserts. And one hour later, it's still warm on the top and ow, it's still hot on the edges. So this is not gonna be quick at all. It's been three hours and it finally feels cold. So let's open it up and take a look. Well, these pop sticks are just sitting on top, of course, because when things melt, they go down, not up. It's not like we're making waffles which have baking powder in so they rise and expand to fill the waffle line as they cook. Nope. The Skittles are set solid and impossible to get out. I'm gonna have to turn it on again for a moment to try and melt a little bit of the Skittles and save the waffle maker. That one that I greased came out. Awesome, Dave can taste that one in a minute but the rest just don't want to budge. I'm gonna to have to spend hours cleaning this mess up. Let's get Dave to taste the one that did work. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. It's a bit, mm. Mm, hold on. It's a bit like a burnt gummy waffle but uh, it's not a pleasant eating experience. What's wrong with ordinary Skittles? Why'd you have to put in a waffle maker? Let's try a new channel. Ratatar, I think it's called. They're testing trend TikTok hacks in real life. 
Mm, even better than I imagined. Now, if I zoom out on that video, you can see that it's had 5.4 million views. That's a lot of views. Now, by the style of that video, because it's very kiddy, I'm assuming that most of those views are coming from kids, not from adults or older teenagers. I know my teenagers would not watch that content. I don't even think Jed would watch that content. If we scroll down though on the video, you can see the comments are switched on. So why does it matter that the comments are switched on? Why am I looking at that? Well, you may or may not remember back in 2019, YouTube got in big trouble for showing targeted ads to children. You're allowed to show ads to kids. You just can't collect their personal data from other things they've looked at and then target them specifically. YouTube got around this by saying no kids were on their platform. You had to be over 13 to download their app. So therefore no kids were viewing YouTube. But then at the same time, they were boasting about how many views their kids' content was getting, especially things like nursery rhyme channels. And the FTC said, hang on a minute, adults aren't watching nursery rhymes. So they fined them a whopping $170 million for violating the Children's Online Privacy Act. So you've probably heard the word copper bouncing around on YouTube for a while. So now to protect themselves from getting that fine again, YouTube added a little box that we have to tick when we upload a video that says, is this video made for kids? I.e. is the video targeted at children under 13 as the primary audience for it? Now, if it is and you tick yes, the comments also get turned off. So we can tell in this video that they've ticked, no, this is not made for kids, which means targeted ads can appear against it, which gives them higher ad revenue, which is their motivation for ticking. No, it's not made for kids, but clearly to me, this video looks like it is made for kids. And that made me have a look at some other ones as well. If we look here at five minute crafts play, it also has comments turned on their videos too. And if we go to the channel and then scroll down to some of their older videos and click on that, you can see that this channel used to be called Five Minute Crafts Kids. So clearly that whole channel was aimed at kids and the comments are still switched on even though the start of the video says Five Minute Crafts Kids. Anyway, let's go back to the waffle maker because they said they were trying TikTok hacks in real life and I just don't know if what they showed was in real life. So we'll take some M&Ms and add them into our waffle maker, switch it on for just a minute and then take a look. We have burning chocolate and melted cracked M&Ms. It's not looking good, but I reckon I can at least rescue this a little bit by adding some chunks of chocolate over the top and just letting that melt with the machine turned off. This would of course be far better done in a silicon mold and just melting the chocolate properly so that you don't burn your chocolate, but at least I might have something salvageable that I can give to Dave. Oh, wow. All right, well, that helps. Oh, gee. Clean in the fridge. What, the M&Ms were supposed to melt into the shape of the waffle maker? They were supposed to magically turn into waffles with M&Ms. Oh. Them. Well, you know, if that happened, I'd be amazed. That'd be five minute magic. Dave and I have actually been married for 25 years. We had our silver wedding anniversary the other week. And I just wanna say he is the most amazing, loving, creative, unbelievable guy. He's like the dream husband. And he even eats bad food on camera for me. I, he's just great. I just wanna tell you that, he's really cool. Okay, let's have a look at another video. Let's look at one of the frosting ones from Taste Made UK. They had so many in that one video. Okay, they've got an easy bunt cake pour. Put a small cake tin over the top of a bunt cake and pour heaps of frosting in. Then add some cocoa powder, lift the cake tin and watch it in slow motion spread over the sides of the cake and then slice. I like the way they stop the video right before it's going to spill onto the counter. Like you can just see that happening. But anyway, let's give it a go. I have my bunt cake and a cake tin. So I'll pour in that frosting, shake on some cocoa powder, and then lift the cake tin. 
Now we have a little bit going on the outside, but interestingly, most of it seems to be going down the middle and under the cake. It's found an easier way to get out here. And so it is just coming out underneath the cake. All right, I'm gonna to have to clean up that mess. I'm not making another Bundt cake, so we're gonna use the same one again. But first of all, what I'm gonna do is put some melted chocolate at the bottom of the cake and put that in the fridge to set first so that we end up with a hard disc that will hopefully stop the frosting being able to run out underneath the cake. Now that's set, we can do attempt number two. That's looking better. Perfect. And now we can cut a slice and clean the frosting off the counter all over again. I mean, apart from not telling you that it can go under if you don't seal it, it actually looks okay and it tastes okay. It's just really messy. I don't really get the point of letting it all just go everywhere, apart from it looks good on camera, but not necessarily in real life. But anyway, the same video from Tastemade has ice cream frosting. Good old ice cream frosting. We've seen that before from a different channel, haven't we? Now, So Yummy said that you could whip the ice cream frosting into a really thick, spreadable, pipeable frosting, which is impossible. It doesn't matter what you do, it's just not going to whip thick. Theirs at least is making a thinner icing, but let's have a look. I still think that they are not telling the truth here. So they had 12 scoops of ice cream, which they melted and then added one sieve full of icing sugar. Now, as I said, no matter how long you whip that for, it is not going to whip up into a thick frosting. It's always going to be a runny liquid. It just doesn't have enough fat in it. Now I've whipped this for eight minutes and as you can see, it's still liquid. So what if they've got the proportions a bit wrong? Let's see if we add some more icing sugar, we'll add another cup to it and mix it in. And another cup. Mix that in, another one, mix it in, and it's still really, really runny. You couldn't pipe that, but hey, let's add another cup of icing sugar and mix that in. After adding six additional cups of icing sugar, it's still so runny. You could use this as a glaze on donuts, but not as piped icing. Rather than just keeping on adding more and more icing sugar and wasting so much, I'm gonna do this in reverse. Let's start with one sieve full of icing sugar like they had. And this time we're gonna to add to it two scoops of ice cream. Remember they used 12 scoops, so we're only gonna use two. Once that's melted in the microwave, mix it in. And again, we have a thin icing, it won't whip. Let's pipe that onto our cupcake. Now, if you're after a thin icing, you can of course do this, but you wouldn't pipe it on. You'd just dip your cupcake into it. You can do that with icing sugar and any liquid like icing sugar and some lemon juice to make some lemon sort of glaze icing that you just dip in, but it's not whippable. If you want it to be whippable into a nice thick frosting, you're gonna need 30% fat in your ingredients. So for example, I could take some chocolate, which is about 31% fat and some cream. This cream is 30% fat and you mix those two together once it's melted. Overall, we have more than 30% fat in our mixture and it will whip into a really nice thick frosting that you can pipe and put a nice swirl of it on top of a cupcake. But if I get chocolate, which is 30% fat, and add to that some ice cream, which is 11% fat, overall now I don't have 30% fat anymore. So even if I melt that together, and then I try and whip it, and I try and whip it, and I try, it's not going to whip up. It doesn't have a high enough fat content. If you have any other videos you want me to debunk, make sure you send them to me on Twitter. Thank you so much to all my patrons for your ongoing support. You guys really blow me away. I am just, every time, every month when I look at Patreon, I'm just like, wow, I did not expect that people would support my channel like that. And it, it's a really a blessing to me. Thank you. Make sure you watch some more of my videos. And if you want to tell the algorithm that this is a good video, make sure you like it, comment on it and share it, send it to someone. Make it a great week and I'll see you on Friday.